All right, welcome everybody. This is Q Academy. My name is Krista Davis. I work in the Customer Ops Division. And uh, my job here is to help educate on what we do here at Quantum and the codings that we have to offer. So today, uh, before we dig into the science of light, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about who Quantum is. We're a really fun group of people. We do really cool things. We like to bend light and play with light. And that's, uh, it's a really cool thing to do. But we have a quick video that I'm going to show you that's going to explain who we are from the ground up. It's over there. An atmosphere here at Quantum can be really summed up in the word fun, <laughs> first and foremost. We are a lot of fun here. Hey, I'm Norm Kester with Quantum Innovations, and I'm the owner here. <coughs> I started this company uh, with the idea in mind that this would be a company that would be a, a marriage between my beliefs and corporate beliefs, and bring those two things together. And I had worked in other companies, and those things weren't true, so I wanted to create an organization where, where that was true. Quantum manufactures AR coding solutions for wholesale labs in the electronics industry. So Fusion M is one of our in-house pieces of equipment that we've been manufacturing here for about five years now. Really changing the market in the way of linear flow. In comparison to like the need 200 pair of lenses, they need to get 200 orders in order to run your job. We give them the machine where we can run that job that day. Southern Oregon is a beautiful place to live. It's a beautiful valley surrounded by these gorgeous mountains. The lakes, the river, the mountains, hiking. And it's all here. Just within 30 or 40 minutes, you can reach all of those things from quantum time to work. The culture here is a big part of, of who and what we're about. Uh, and so there's a great sense of, of team. There's a great sense of wanting for your success, wanting for you to be successful in the things that, that you do. I feel like I have a voice, and I get to use that voice, and they want to use that voice. One of my favorite things about Quantum is the giving back environment. We have an attitude of servitude, and we love giving back. You know, with all the giving back activities that we do, we want to have an impact and improve the local community. There are things that people here are passionate about. In our Giving Back program, we match dollar for dollar what our people are passionate about. They don't micromanage our time off. For me, that's one of the number one benefits of working here. Sometimes people just have things they need to do. And in order in particular, just they really do them. You know, it's not a work-life balance. It's all life. I love that about this company. It's the first place I've ever worked where I can make a schedule that works around my family, my children, their school schedule, and, and I don't have to feel guilty about that. I'm, I get to be a mom. Norm is walking the walk daily to show us he means what he says. Um, that means that he cares, and, and it's real. We've got people that have really high attention to detail, but at the heart of the people, it has to be that you care about others and you really want to have a real humble approach to, to servanthood and to serving other people. The knowledge that everyone has in this company combined is just incredible. And I'm very thankful that we have the people we do working here to provide that, to help other people want to grow like myself. Operators become supervisors, and supervisors become managers. And it warms my heart to see that, you know, we were there in the beginning, and we're still there today. It's the first time in my life that I've actually worked in a place that I actually felt like everybody here is a, a brother or a sister. It's it's that close. So we love each other, if you didn't get that. <laughs> we love what we do. We love our community. 
and we're driven by our core purposes. And you'll see this, I'm sure the people that have visited us today um, have seen these already as you've been here. Our core purposes uh, are very near and dear to our hearts and what we do on a daily basis. The first one being servants. Um, we serve our community, we serve the people in our community, we serve each other in the needs that come up. A uh, perfect example of this is when the Southern Oregon uh, community got hit with wildfires. We all joined hands, locked arms, and we did what we needed to do for the community. Um, we like to be disruptive. Um, this can sometimes be a little interesting because we like to think outside the box, but this allows us to be innovators, to step outside of what's normal and create really cool things and do things that is not normal, but can actually help people and improve their lives. That's what disruptive means. And we like to be fun. We like to have a lot of fun. <laughs> one example of what we do when we're, when we're having too much fun is one day we hit our goal and uh, they shut the office down and they said, nope, we're closing shop today. We're gonna take you out. And we, they went on, uh, we went on a jet boat tour with the jet boats that did all the cool tricks and stuff. We had lunch, it was a beautiful day. We had so much fun, but that was a part of coming to work that day was we just went and had fun. We like to be experts and knowledge givers. This is a huge part of what we do because we don't just come into a laboratory and set up a process or work on machines. We also leave with, we leave you with the information that we have in our heads. It's not just to come in and service the machine. Let me tell you about why we do what we do. Why do we have this treatment? Why do we have all of these different coatings? And let me educate you so that you can be better at your job and you can also help somebody else be better. That's all a part of what we do. So it's not just one thing. We have these five core principles and it's really what keeps quantum ticking. So now that we're done gushing about the company, let me tell you about what we're gonna talk about. Um, today we're gonna talk about the science of light. We're gonna talk about light in our glasses. We're gonna talk about enhancing light and we're gonna help your patients see better and more of their world. So next up, we're going to watch a quick video. Um, I have to preface this by telling you that it is a little bit like a high school science video. So just keep that in mind as you watch it. It's very informative, though. Enjoy. It's all around us. But what is it? Where does it come from? And what does light have to do with color? Light is a kind of energy that travels in waves. It is made when matter is heated up or gains energy. Excess energy is released, in part, as light. This energy is called electromagnetic radiation. When we talk about light, we usually mean visible light, which is the light that we can see with our eyes. But there are more types of electromagnetic radiation that are invisible to us, including radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Scientists can detect and measure invisible radiation with special tools. Together with visible light, all these types of radiation are called the electromagnetic spectrum. All electromagnetic radiation travels in waves, but different types have different wavelengths. The wavelength of electromagnetic radiation, or light, is connected to how much energy it has. Light with a longer wavelength, like radio waves, has less energy, while light with a shorter wavelength, like gamma rays, has more energy. Visible light makes up only a tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it includes every color we can see. The most important source of light here on Earth is the sun. We call ordinary sunlight white light but it actually includes all the colors of visible light. These colors can be revealed when white light goes through a prism. When light passes through a prism or something like it, it slows down a little bit and bends. Some parts of the light grow more than others, and the light spreads out into the colors of the spectrum. If you want to see all of the colors in the visible light spectrum, look no further than a rainbow. Rainbows are made when water droplets in the air bend sunlight much like a prism. Usually when we talk about a rainbow, we say it is made of seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, 
indigo, and violet. Each color has a different wavelength. Red has the longest wavelength in the spectrum of visible light, and violet has the shortest wavelength. All the other colors have wavelengths in between the two. The colors of a rainbow are always in the same order because the colors are arranged according to their wavelength. Red is always on the outside because red has the longest wavelength, and violet is always on the inside because violet has the shortest wavelength. Electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength outside the visible light spectrum is invisible to our eyes. Light with a longer wavelength than the reddest red our eyes can see is called infrared light. Light with a shorter wavelength than the most violet violet we can see is called ultraviolet. When we look at an object, we are actually seeing the light that is bouncing off of it. A green leaf looks green because the leaf absorbs all of the colors in the spectrum except for green, which it reflects. When the green light enters our eyes, our brain tells us it looks green. Things that look white are reflecting almost all of the visible light shining on them, and things that look black are absorbing almost all of the visible light shining on them. Light, both visible and invisible, is all around us. It travels from its source as a wave, bringing energy with it. Without light, there would be no colors. Take a look at the world around you and remember, everything you can see is just different wavelengths of reflected light. Goodbye till next time. Goodbye till next time. <laughs> a reason awake, right? <laughs> okay. So, recapping what was just said in the video, as we look at green leaves, how can we see green? What's the reason? Does anybody know? What is? The green is being reflected back. And what's happening to the other colors? Absorbed. Perfect. And if we see black, what's happening? All the colors are being absorbed, right? And if we see white, they're being reflected. All the colors are being reflected. So as we look at white light, it's not actually white light. It's all the colors, unless we put a prism in front of it, like the rainbow, right? So when we look at, just to recap, Joe, <laughs> what do you see when you look at the uh, apple? Red, a bunch of red. And why do you see red? reflecting the red and what's happening to the other colors it's being absorbed perfect you guys got it you you pass gold <laughs> star so as the image of the apple passes through the lens our lens is transposing that image to our retina the retina is telling the brain that it's a red apple okay but the biggest source of light of natural light is coming from the sun and the sun again in recap has how, well, what colors what? Oh. All the colors, right, are com is coming from the sun. And the reflection of that comes from different objects. Everything reflects light. And how does light travel? In waves, right? Every light has a different wavelength. So as we look at wavelengths and light, we see radio waves, microwaves, infrared. The visual light spectrum is in the middle. We all know ultraviolet, or excuse me, yeah, ultraviolet light, UV light, UVA, UVB, cancer causing, right? UVC is the new one that everybody's heard about that Quantum's actually taken an interest in in uh, UVC disinfection. So we're using that in our disinfection units uh, after COVID. And then you've got X rays, which obviously we use a lot in the medical field as well, and gamma rays. But we're going to deal with the visual light spectrum today. So just like in the video, what the video said, with rainbows, each, each color of light has a different frequency. There's a different wave that you see when you look at a rainbow. So we're going to demonstrate. This might seem silly, but we're going to demonstrate, Stacy. So if you are on the red, excuse me, yeah, if you're in the red spectrum, how fast do you think it should go? Because it's on the lower end, right? So if you're a red light, 
Can you demonstrate what the wavelength might look like? Long and slow. Long and slow, right? You can do this all day long. We can do this. Doesn't take a lot of energy. Yep, very casual. <laughs> and if you were on the violet side, high energy. On the violet light, it has a short, short wavelength. wavelength with uh, a lot of energy. So if I did this all day long, I'm going to get pretty tired after a while. It takes a lot of energy to keep this wavelength going. So it's just a quick, easy way for you to remember red, long, slow wavelength, right? Violet, short, quick wavelength takes a lot of energy. Perfect. And energy is important when we start talking about coding and lenses and what we're doing in this and light. So in the, in the order of a rainbow, like she said, it's always in the same order, and it's based on the level of energy in that color. So red is always going to be on the outside because it has the high, excuse me, it's always going to be on the outside because it has the lowest amount of energy, and violet always is, will be on the inside because it has the highest amount of energy. Does that make sense? So next we're going to go over lenses 101. We're going to break down lenses and how they actually bend light how coatings uh, can impact that. And we're going to talk about the lens type, prescription type, material type, and then we're going to talk about coatings. So first up, I have this really great display. And I'm sorry, my cord is very short over here. Um, this is a laser. Don't shine this in your eyes. This is a laser that has, I'm going to come on this side, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so as you can see, it's just shooting the laser straight. And we're going to show you the difference of lenses. So if you are a minus patient, you require a minus lens. Can you tell me if this is hyperope or, or excuse me, if this is nearsighted or farsighted? Does anybody know? Anybody? I know you probably know, yeah. right? Anybody? Anybody? So this is a, um, this is a uh, excuse me, this is a minus lens for a myope patient. It's a concave lens, so that's why it has the curve. That's how you can remember it's a concave lens. It has a cave in the middle. And if you put this up to the light, what happens with myopes is that they need the image to hit farther back because the image is hitting too far forward on their retina. They're not able to see the image clearly. So by using this tool, we can demonstrate what, what this lens does for a myope. It's going to diverge the light. Can you guys see that? It's diver diverging the light farther than it would normally hit on the retina so that the image can be brought in clear at the correct focal point for that myope patient. The opposite is true for a plus patient. They have a convex lens, which is fat in the middle, skinny on the edge. And this lens is going to converge the, the image to hit the retina. This is a really hard, yeah. Curve. So what's happening is it's bringing the image closer in because hyperopes, I'm a hyperope, so I can talk clearly about this. We like to go the distance. We're <laughs> hyper, right? So the image overshoots the retina. So we need to bring the image closer in so that it hits in the right spot for the brain to transpose the image properly in our, for the brain to transpose the image properly, period. <laughs> so those are the differences of lens uh, types. We're gonna talk about materials in a moment, but I wanted to break this down before we go too much further so you understand that the lens itself is going to bend the light and we're going to add a coating to it to help increase the amount of light getting to the eye. So, it's important to know that every lens on the market, every material type, reflects a certain amount of light away from the eye. Uh, no matter anything you look through, everything, as we learned, everything reflects light in some way or another, right? Glasses are no different. As we look through them, they're going to let light in, but it's going to block about We'll go through the numbers in a minute. But <laughs> it's going to reflect a certain amount of light, so you're not getting all of the light that's available to you. And so this is an important thing as you, uh, as you think about low light conditions, especially night driving, those sort of things. It becomes imperative that we get all of the available light to see clearly as we're driving, as we're doing everyday tasks. Um, I know if I'm doing anything really intricate, I used to do these little detailed paintings, I had to have extra light because I needed to see clearly what I was looking at. It was hard with my glasses. And then I got AR. Hmm. But in low light conditions, it's important. 
And if you spend too much time in low light, you start looking like this guy. Nobody wants to look like this guy. <laughs> but in low light conditions, it's very important that we have the most available light as we're driving, we're doing tasks. It's very, very important. It can be visually distracting. There's a lot of glare involved. Halos, I'm sure we've all seen this, especially in Oregon. It rains quite a bit here. We get a lot of road glare and, and halos as we're driving. Anti-reflection coatings can help with that. So as we're looking through different material types, each material type blocks a certain amount of light. So as we look at the light transmission, this is the total amount of light that that lens material type is letting through. So uh, most people live in this range. So it's 8 to 10 percent of light that's being reflected away from the eye and not being let in. So 8 to 10 percent is the average that is not reaching your eye. As you get into the higher indexes, these poor people are the ones that actually need it the most. They can't see already, right? <laughs> they have a bad prescription already that they really need help seeing. And then we're going to block up to 17%. It's going to reflect 17%. That's atrocious. That's why a lot of laboratories won't even do 174 without anti-reflection coating. So this is very, very important to the patients, especially that are in these higher powers that require this higher index. So 10% may not sound like a lot, but I'm not okay with not having 10% of the available information. I would be very upset with Waze <laughs> <laughs> driving out of town and only getting 10% of my map available to me. Then you're in that commercial where you drive into the lake, you know? Yeah, that's no good for anybody. So I want to have all the information available. But sometimes, <laughs> these are my twins. <laughs> they both lost their front teeth at Christmas time. It was the perfect opportunity. <laughs> um, but sometimes losing 10% is a good thing, right? We want our kids to get their adult teeth. Sometimes it can be inconvenient. You're missing a seat and a back tire. Uncomfortable, unless you're the Unipiper in Portland. Uh, <laughs> You can't do it very well. <laughs> but sometimes it can be devastating. And this, this is really what it comes down to, is we're improving patients' lives. And I remember a story uh, when I was working for a laboratory. I was waiting for the optician um, to have some time for me, and she was finishing up with a patient. It was a father and daughter, and the daughter had just gotten her eyes checked for the first time. And she was a high minus. Never knew it. She was a pr teenager, so 15, 16 years old was going to get her permit, failed the eye test, so she had to go get her eyes checked, and turns out she needed a high index lens, and optician recommended AR, and obviously the frame. Dad says, oh, that's so expensive. It, it's an expensive lens. What can we cut, he says. And the optician says, well, anti-reflection is optional. And I almost jumped out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I was going to let them do their job. Um, but the optician said it's optional. I would much rather cut back on the frame than cut back on the lenses, really, because we're here to see, not to look good. That's debatable. But, <laughs> um, but so they, the dad uh, is putting this new driver on the road with a high minus prescription with no AR. That could be devastating. Inexperience matched with not being able to see all the available light, it's a problem. So quick question, quick poll, why are we in optical? Why are you in the optical industry? What's your answer, Ernie, back there? <coughs> Help, people see better. Help people see better. Anybody have a different answer? Is that the answer? It just improves quality of life. Improves quality of life, I like it. We're here to change people's lives, to help them see better. We've all seen these these videos of the baby getting glasses for the first time. This is, this is why I do what I do. My first optical job was in a pediatric clinic. 
and there's nothing, nothing like seeing a baby or a small child see their parent's face clearly for the first time. Nothing like it. And that's truly why I'm here. Why I'm in Optical is to help people see better, see more of their world, see their family. I mean, we just lived through a year of not being able to see family. <laughs> but at least we have digital devices. But now there's, you know, all these other things that come into play with that. But we're here to improve lives. We're here to help patients see their mom and dad for the first time. But don't get me wrong, glasses are an amazing, amazing tool. But they can also be a huge distraction. As we learned, without AR, they can really get in the way of a lot of things. It can make you frustrated. It can give you unwanted glare, distraction, I mean, all kinds of hassles if you don't have the right coatings for your lifestyle or the right treatments. So we have a solution. Through, the, uh, through our coatings, we can help your patients see more of the world around them. We have different coatings. Um, through AR, AR is a typical term that we hear, anti-reflection anti-glare, we need to change the narrative. Anti-glare, anti-reflection has such a negative undertone. And us old people that have been around the industry for a long time, we remember selling AR that would peel and crack and craze, and people hated it. And so the old timers that have been wearing glasses for a long time remember those days. I certainly do. AR and anti-reflection has such a huge undertone, to, uh, negative undertone to it that we need to change the narrative. Instead, we should be asking our patients, would you like light enhancing technology? Patient's gonna go, what the heck is that? Right? This opens the door for you to have a valuable conversation with your patient around what light enhancing technology is and what it can do for them based on their lifestyle, based on their lens material that's recommended for their powers, LET, we like acronyms at Quantum. I should have included that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> LET, light enhancing technology, lets the light in. It's about light. It's about enhancing the light. And it's about letting more light in. So this video uh, was created by our marketing team here at Quantum. This is one example of a loop video that we created for ECP's waiting rooms. Uh, we have other things like patient information cards, trifolds, uh, flyers, all those things that are patient-centric patient to help you guys tell the story of light-enhancing technology. Really, this is a program that is built for laboratories to reach the ECPs and help the ECPs reach their customer, reach their patient. We know that the big, bi the big stores, the big, not the big stores, excuse me, uh, the big names, I won't say the names, but the big names in our industry, they have deep pockets. They have deep pockets when it comes to marketing. What are the independent ECPs and independent labs supposed to do to reach their patients? This is a way we can do that. This is called the Marketing Resource Program, and this program allows you to have branded products for your uh, either your ECPs or for their patients, or both. So we can talk about that at another time, but just so you know, we do have information available to help you have the conversation about what uh, light enhancing technology is. So we're going to dig into uh, a couple of our coatings that we have, our most popular coatings, and one of them is our Sentinel UV coating. Um, this is a, it's a beautiful coating. 
Uh, it has UV on the back side, so it doesn't allow UV to transmit back into your eye. But what this coating is about is we're letting more light in, we're reducing eye fatigue and strain. A lot of people uh, struggle with, uh, uh, with eye strain just from everyday use of their eyes, especially now that we're on more devices. Um, but it's going to increase contrast. That's what this one's really beautiful at. It increases the contrast of the world around us, so you're seeing more vibrant colors. Uh, it's more like the natural eye when you're outdoors. You can really see those greens and blues pop. This is a really beautiful, um, beautiful coating. It helps uh, with night driving. It's going to create less glare. Create less glare? Is that, that's a double negative. Uh, it's going to reduce glare and halos from night driving. Um, not only that, but it's going to be visually appealing. I don't know if any of you have seen the side-by-side -side of what, uh, what AR versus non-AR lenses look like. One's white, as if you see the reflection of lights around you, you'll see white reflections in the eyes. And then the other pair, you'll see beautiful eyes, right? So the Sentinel UV is a green colored AR. It's a beautiful lens. Um, but as you're wearing it, people actually see your eyes through it. It's, it's really nice to look through. One other quick thing that I will mention um, is we love Billy Crystal. Who doesn't love Billy Crystal? <laughs> but as you get older, you need six times, 65 and older need six times the amount of light to do the same task as an 18 year old. So as your patients age, think about your presbyopes. When they hit 40, you need to start thinking about they're going to need more and more light as they get older and older, right? So keep that in mind as you're talking to older patients. Next, we're going to move on to blue light. Um, Blue light, does everybody know, where's the biggest source of blue light? Where do we get the most blue light from? Wrong. Sun. The sun, yes. We get the most blue light from the sun. But that's, it's impacted more now, though, because we've introduced other things like tablets, smartphones. How many of you use a tablet or a smartphone? <laughs> everybody, right? So quick question, quick poll. How many hours a day do you think you're spending on a tablet or a smartphone or a computer? All three combined. How many do you think? All three combined? Yeah. At least six. Six hours? OK. Be between work and yeah, yeah. home. OK. Yeah. How many hours a day do you think you're spending on a device of some sort? Twelve. Twelve? Five on your phone. Just your phone. <laughs> Just your phone. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, on average, we're spending more and more time, especially after COVID, right? We're spending a lot of time on our devices. And when we go outside, we're also being blasted with blue light from the sun. So we're getting a double dose of what we would normally get. And as most of you know, blue light affects our circadian rhythm. It affects our sleep, which affects our brain activity affects our stress level. It affects so many things in our life if our circadian rhythms are off. So Quantum has, re, uh, has introduced a, a solution for that. Um, I think I jumped the gun a little bit. We're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, this is just, this is very old, so I apologize. But this just gives you some information that the Vision Council came up with. Um, they, pulled 80, uh, they pulled adults and found that 83% of them are saying that they use digital devices for more than two hours a day. This is from 2018? 2018. So pre-COVID, <laughs> now everybody's working from home, well not everybody, but a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people are working more and more on the computer than they ever have before. I would guarantee you that that number is more like 12. Uh, I would say 12 plus hours on some sort of device, phone, tablet, or computer. 60% uh, of those people polled reported that they had some sort of digitalized strain symptoms. Anybody have any ideas of what digitalized strain symptoms are? Dry eyes. Dry eyes is one. Mm -hmm. But you're blinking less. When you're looking at, think about gamers, when they're playing games, they don't blink. They sit there like this and they play their games. We do the same thing. We just don't realize it. We do the same thing when we're looking at our computer screens. We don't blink very often. We don't blink as normally as we would if we were not looking at a screen. What other symptom? We have dry eyes. Eye twitches. Eye twitches. 
It's not one on my list, but it's probably one, I would say. Yeah, it's like a stress thing. Um, neck and shoulder pain. Headache. Headaches. Fatigue. I'm sorry? Fatigue. Yep, yeah. Uh, all of those things are related to digital eye strain. And the most concerning one is we think about our children and what they're dealing with right now. Because, first of all, kids get all the credit in the world for what they've dealt with with COVID. I just got to put that out there. They're not getting enough credit for what they've, what they've been through. But they have been moved to tablets for schoolwork. My kids have been on Zoom calls more than I have. That's saying a lot. <laughs> They're on Zoom calls all day long at home. I had to get them, I called them tablet glasses because it helps with their fatigue and eye strain as they're looking at their tablets. And it's just got a small little bump of correction um, to help them with the up close work. That's a thing now, tablet glasses. Write that down, that's a phrase, a key phrase that you can really use um, to really talk about the story about kids and digital devices. So the solution that we have come up with, I said the wrong one, uh -uh. Uh, is EAT. Again, we like our acronyms. EAT stands for Energy Absorbing Technology. So we're going to eat the blue light. Don't you love that little phrase? So every other AR coating on the market that uh, reflects blue light has the blue on the front blue on the back, it's reflecting from both surfaces. So if you're getting blue light from the back surface, it's going to reflect it back in your eye. We don't have that problem with EAT. It's absorbing the blue light in the lens surface. So no more reflecting blue light, no more taking pictures with your glasses on where you have what looks like a blue mirror on your glasses. Now it can be this green color. I was wrong when I told you before. This is EAT. <laughs> um, it can be, it's a coating that's added to any other lens coating that we have available. So you can add it to Sentinel and uh, it's going to absorb the, the blue light instead of reflecting. So that's pretty cool. There's nothing else like it on the market and that's what's really um, interesting about it. It took the problem of reflecting blue light away from the lens surface. Instead, it's just capturing it in the surface and you don't have to worry about the glare interfe inter interfering with how you look. Also, I don't know about any of you, but when I'm driving wearing blue light glasses, I see halos, uh, little blue reflections. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that. It really bothers me. So for me personally, EAT is a great solution because now I'm protected for blue light, but in a coating that I feel comfortable and confident wearing when I'm driving especially. So what we've done is we've uh, added this this layer to a, an AR coating or a light enhancing technology um, where it has uh, super hydrophobic. Does anybody know the difference between hydrophobic and super hydrophobic? No. Okay, so what we did is we added um, oleophobic and hydrophobic, thank you. My brain just shut off there for a second. Hydrophobic and oleophobic layer into one. And so it, it offers uh, a hard coat that is super strong, so it's going to give you scratch resistance, it's going to give you water resistance, it's going to repel the, the durst, dirt, lint, and dust, which will result in less scratching, less cleaning. And we know patients, glasses off, shirt tail, right? That's how they clean their glasses. Guilty. Um, <laughs> so this is going to solve that problem because they're going to be less dirty less often. Okay. So this acts kind of like armor for your lenses. But at the end of the day, education is key to this whole thing. We need to change our verbiage to light enhancing technology, create the new dialogue, ask better questions around the patient's lifestyle. If we ask better questions around the lifestyle, we're going to learn that they need sunglasses, they might need sports goggles, they might need um, swimming goggles, they might need computer glasses, they're going to need a regular pair of of going out glasses. They may want a fancy pair of glasses. I know I have a pair. <laughs> but if we ask the right questions, it's not about selling more, it's about selling what's right for the patient. It's about doing what's right based on their lifestyle and their needs. So educating the patient comes with you first getting educated on what available coatings there are and how it's gonna impact your patients. 
And that's what I have. Oh, that was really big. Sorry about that. Uh, any questions? Any comments? We're good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. If you have any questions or if you need anything, uh, my email's right there, and I can always be found by phone as well. So give me a shout anytime. Okay? Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.